Our meeting is now being recorded. So let me start by sharing my slides to you. Please let me know if you can see it clearly. Dahil naglolo ko ang ating PowerPoint paminsan. Okay. Para po sa mga wala pang certificates, you may use the form later. Okay? And then wait until matapos po ang ating session dahil sigurado po ako. Okay? With the certainty coming from the teachings of the Magisterium, biro lamang po, no? that we will receive your certificates today. It's now being regenerated. I will update you later once all the certificates request have been processed since day one. So, sunod-sunod po yan. Simultaneous, gumagana po yung program na ating ginagamit for certificate generation. And yes, as the song mentioned earlier, let us start our time together with our opening prayer. Let us remember that we are in the presence of the Almighty God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, today we thank you for giving us this opportunity to unbox the Word, to know more about our faith. Today, Lord, we ask you to help us sincerely unbox the truth that with humility and courage we may follow you wherever you lead us. O Spirit of truth and wisdom, Spirit of understanding and counsel, Holy Spirit of joy and peace, Gaudium cum pace, please strengthen the faith that is in us, that our hearts may be filled with a desire for holiness and passion for souls, that we may serve you here on earth and be united with you in heaven. Amen. And now we invoke the Holy Spirit as we have sung before the before the session has started, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit then instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I, I think this is not, we don't have a first timer. If this is your first time seeing me in the seminar series, please type number one. So I would know up to what extent I should, you know, give uh, more ideas about my background. So I'll be skipping some slides here. If you have been with us since day one, can you please type day one so that we know that this is not the first time we are seeing each other. So still, I'm Burns, okay? And we are going to talk about the digital crusade. How to teach the faith in the technocentric world. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be sharing with you some insights that I have learned as a teacher for six years in Paref Northfield School for Boys, as a mentor, and also as someone who's very uh, into technology. I've been the student moderate, the, the moderator of our student publication which has won three times in the Catholic Mass Media Awards or the CMMA, where we also use technology for evangelization. And as I've mentioned before, I'm also an insurance agent. I have families plan their investments, retirement, and estate, inheritance taxes, and I do unboxing Catholicism, our online apostolate to defend the faith clearly without being preachy. I'm also on YouTube. You can watch this dialogue with an atheist. I'm curious, has anyone seen this full video? Can you type CA if you have seen in this uh, video of my dialogue with an atheist? And let us know your thoughts. You can comment there. It has a very, very healthy comment section. One of the healthiest I have seen in YouTube. If you haven't seen it yet, this is something you might want to send to your students to pick their curiosity and ask their thoughts about, especially when you're teaching religion. And I do podcast with Brother Bo Sanchez and our team of feast speakers. And speaking of technology, Okay. We are also on Radio Veritas where we use live streaming to teach the faith on the radio. And since this is relevant, I would like to share with you that I am also a level 2 Google for Education certified educator. So I can send, I can share with you insights and ask, I can answer your questions about technology during our session. Before anything else, I would like to have a simple activity. Okay? Can you type letter R or hmm, what, what is the better letter for this? Basically, this activity is you have to guess. No? Not, not, don't type any letters. I'm sorry about that. Guess what the symbol or what the logo I'll be flashing on the screen means. And we will see how aware you are 
with technology and the lingo that goes with it. So can you type? What do you call this symbol that you are seeing on the screen now? A lot of our young people would use this. Very good. Hashtag. So everyone knows that this is a hashtag. What about the next one? Okay, can you just comment any of the words that you know here? BTW, BRB, LOL. Wag na po yung what? Yung WTF oh, or palitan yun. <laughs> okay, be right back. Very good. Okay, ASAP, you know this thing. Laugh out loud, by the way. Okay, great. Okay, see you later. Skip na ho natin yung may bad word dyan, ha? O pwede nyo palitan yung last word. Okay, very good. What about this? What is it that you can get from this app? Can you type that in the chat box? Music. What else? Sige nga, subukan natin. How aware are you in using Spotify? Apart from music, how can we use Spotify? Can I see? Oh, music lang ba? Yes, there are podcasts. In fact, my podcast is there on Spotify. You can search my name, Unboxing Catholicism. It's there on Spotify. And please, why don't you take the time also today to go to Spotify and then even with your free account, you can go to Unboxing Catholicism and click that subscribe or follow button. And if you have listened to one or two of our episodes, please give us a five-star review to help us. Rise up in the algorithm so that more people can defend the faith clearly without being preachy. So what about this? What do you call this one, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, Facebook. Very good. Okay, ito po. Are you aware of this? Ayan, ito yung ginagamit ng mga kabataan natin. Okay, what about this one? Okay, maraming nakakaalam. Tumblr. Ayan, very good. Okay, hindi na po ito Twitter. Ha? This is called Tumblr. What about this one? I think all of us use this, no? Gmail. Okay, very good. Alam naman pala natin eh. Okay, what about this one? Ayan. Okay, so Mr. Rentoy, our audience are very much into technology. This is very interesting. What about this one? Ayan. Okay. Yung parang nat medyo natigil tayo sa pagta-type, no? <laughs> Snapchat. Very good. Okay, Snapchat. C-H-A-T. Hindi po snapshot ha. Iba po yung snapshot. Okay, yung snapshot, pag pinikturan nyo itong screen natin, snapshot po yan. Ito, para po sa mga nanggaling sa lunch. Food Panda. Very good. Okay, what about this one? Okay, alam ba natin ito? Yan, Lala Move. Okay, what about this one? I think this is the last. Yan, usong-uso. Dito na po kumukuha ng balita ang mga tao ngayon. That's where people would get their news. Mas reliable daw ito kesa sa mainstream media. Oh my goodness, no? We have to correct that mindset, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, what about this one? Isa pang pinagkukuhanan ng mga balita. Mas reliable daw ito kasama ng TikTok kesa daw sa diaryo. Kesa daw sa mga libro. So, kailangan daw natin mag-research. Diyan daw tayo gagawa kasama ng TikTok. Ayan, YouTube. Okay, what about this one? Ayan. Telegram. Okay, very good. Alam na alam pala natin lahat ng mga logos na ito. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a snapshot, okay, of how we are very much into technology. As of January 2021, there are 7.8 billion people in the world. 5.22 billion of them are using mobile phones. 4.66 billion are using internet and 4.22 billion are active social media users. Kasama po ba kayo dito? Are you part of the social media world? If you have social media, whatever, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram, can you comment SM just so I know if you are on social media also? And yes, Many of us, especially those who are in touch with young people, are also using social media. So this is the landscape that we live in now, ladies and gentlemen. And we have seen a tremendous growth in the use of internet and technology. That's why we, the title of the talk mentions we live in a very technocentric world. Let's take a look at the figures of statistics from We Are Social and Hootsuite. There is an increase of 81 million in terms of our population 
and 93 more million who use mobile phones, 316 million who use the internet, and additional 490 million who use social media. Now, as Catholics, I want to orient your minds. Okay? This may sound to be like mere numbers. Okay, 491 million, billion people. But each number, ladies and gentlemen, represents a soul. A soul that God truly loves. A soul that is redeemed by the blood of Jesus. No, sometimes we forget that. When we go through statistics, all we see are numbers. But we have to understand that these are not just numbers. These are souls. Kaluluwa. Can you type that word souls? Now, wow, this is the landscape. There are billions of souls or millions, hundred millions of souls connected to the technology, connected to the internet. And many of this, okay, all right, many of these people are doing several things. Okay, let's continue with our statistics. According to this slide, 4.66 billion, not just people, souls are using the internet. Okay? So how many percent of that, uh, how many percent of our population are tuned into the online world? 59.5. Okay? And then annual change in the number of global internet user, 7.3%. It may sound 7% lang pala, late lang, but that amounts to 316 million souls. And average daily time spent in the internet by each internet user, 6.54 hours. Okay? At sino po sa mga may internet ang may access sa cellphone? 92.6%. Per 92 do you know any person in your family who do not own a mobile device? Siguro yung mga bata, wala pa, no? Or those who are uh, really living a nomadic or sorry, a uh, very simple lifestyle. But all of us, have mobile devices. And I mean, in, many of us would have multiple mobile devices and all of them are connected online. Now, in terms of daily time spent using the internet, do you know who is number one? The world spends only 6.54 hours online, but there is a country that spends 10.56 hours online. Can you guess what that country is? Can you comment there in the chat box? Anong bansa po yung pinakamahaba gumamit ng internet? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Philippines. Okay, and these are figures from January 2021. Ha? Mr. Rentoy can send us the updated figures in our chat box for April 2022. Dahil meron na palang bago. Thank you, Mr. Rentoy. No, I was not able to incorporate it in my slide. But kindly send it here. And makikita natin, I am very sure that the Philippines is still part of the top 10. No? And as Mr. Rentoy mentioned, nakakalungkot. Hindi lang tayo number one sa daily time spent using the internet. We're also number one in the use of pornography. At ang mas nakakagulat po dyan, women in the Philippines consume more porn than men. What is happening? No, This technology has to be used for something good. And now it is being demonized. But does that mean, Mr. Kaasi, Mr. Rentoy, we should avoid the internet all in all? Well, we will unbox what the church teaches about that. No, So daily time spent using mobile phones, you know, let's number one, paki-comment nga po sa ating chat. Again, Pilipinas. Okay, so number one ulit ang Philippines. So anong ginagawa natin? The world's most used social media platforms, we know this already. Facebook, YouTube, etc., etc. Okay, reasons for using social media, we know this. Take a screenshot of this and, you know, please refer also to the updated figures of Mr. Rentoy. Very interesting itong survey na to, to stay up to date with the news and current events. Find funny or entertaining content. Ang nangyayari ngayon, mga kaibigan, yung funny at entertaining, nagiging research na, nagiging factual. So we have to teach our students how to do critical thinking. Later, we will get back to that. Fill up spare time. 34.4%. That means, dear friends, dear Catholic teachers, parents, educators, ang daming free time ng mga tao. 34.4% said, ang dami nilang oras and they want to use it by filling it up with social media. But as Catholics, we know that 
Where is the devil's playground? An idle mind. So, grabe, no? We have a lot of space to fill in. What if during that time we fill them with the faith? What if during that time they use that to pray using technology, to meditate using technology? Okay, well, of course, staying in touch with family and friends, that's good. Sharing photos, that's good. Etc., etc. Marami pa pong ginagamit sa internet. Now, I want to give you a snapshot, okay, of the history of the use of social media because this is very interesting. There are very interesting uh, milestones that we need to take note of. So, 1978, nag-start yung bulletin board system, yung mga forums. Okay, 1997, Google.com was registered. Okay, and then in, 19, in 2000, then 2003, there's LinkedIn. Okay, 2004, Facebook was launched. Okay, and Yahoo, Vice Flickr, etc. YouTube was born in 2005. Tandaan lang natin, hindi natin kailangan i-memorize. We don't have to memorize, but let's be reminded of the dates because later I'll show you how the church has gone with the signs of times and adapted with technology. Okay, 2006, Twitter okay, was founded. Okay, 2010, Instagram. And then 2012, binili ng Facebook si Instagram. Okay? And then you, you know this. So, tandaan natin, 2004, Facebook, which is the most used. 2006, si Instagram. Kailan si Google? 1997. Just think of these three. Google, Facebook, Twitter. Okay? Kahit Instagram, wala na. Very recent na yan. So, ano yung tatlong tatandaan natin? Google, 1997. Facebook, 2004. And then Twitter, 2006. Now, this is the story of social media. As Catholic educators, parents, parishioners, nuns, seminarians, etc., we are interested to ask this question. What did the church do? What did the church say? Are you interested to unbox that? Can you type letter C? If you want to know what the church said during this time that the world is becoming more and more connected with social media. In fact, you would realize that the, that the church is ahead of its time and at the same time, in some aspects, a little bit delayed. Okay? I'll tell you why. Alright? So, the church in perspective. Again, ulitin natin, 97 si Google, 2004 si Facebook, 2006 si Twitter. Okay? In 19... Kailan? <laughs> 1963. Long before internet and social media has dominated the, the, the digital space, the church published Intermirifica, Decree on the Media of Social Communication in the Second Vatican Council. So, have you read Intermirifica? Can you comment I am if you have read or if you have heard of this before? This is a very short document, ladies and gentlemen, that I would encourage all of you to spend time reading because it's very beautiful. Here you will see what the church wants us to know about technology and how we should behave as Catholic Christians. And later, of course, I will give you some summary for those who do not have the time to read Intermirifica. So, when did this happen? 1963. Ang bilis, no? Pumbaga, the church was ahead of its time at this point. Now, 2002, long before... Facebook and Twitter were launched, St. John Paul II published this document called Internet, a new forum for proclaiming the gospel. So no one can say that the church is outdated. In fact, nauuna tayo. No, 2004, nag-start ang Facebook. 2002, pa, 1963 pa lang. The church already has something to say about this rising technology. Now, again, 2004 si Facebook, 2006 si Twitter. In 2005, St. John Paul II issued an apostolic letter called Il Rapidos Vilupo or Rapid Development where he also discussed the implications of technology to our faith. Okay? Do you find this interesting? No, no. Is, are, is this new information, new knowledge for you? If this is new to you, please type letter N in the chat box. Okay? If we're learning something new. And in 2009... Okay, bago mag-start ang Instagram, a little after Twitter started, Pope Benedict XVI, okay, I forgot to put the name, spoke of this very interesting concept of digital continent. And he did this 
in the World Day of Communications. Okay? So yung buong simbahan natin, talagang they are aware of what is happening. And in 2019, this is very recent, before the pandemic, Pope Francis published the very, very beautiful papal exhortation, Christus Vivit, which is addressed to young people. And he describes the web and social network as opportunities for dialogue and encounter. Okay, have you read Christus Vivit? If you have, please comment CV in our chat box. Okay, this is an easy reading also. You know how Pope Francis writes. It's very accessible. He makes a lot of sense. He uses graphic examples and case studies from around the world. That's why I suggest if we want to know how to get in touch with the young people, immerse ourselves with Christus Vivit. Okay? So, wala pang nakakabasa ng Christus Vivit. That is your assignment. I hope you can use it as your spiritual reading. Okay, so now, let's deep dive. Again, for the church, technology, media, and advancements, this is nothing new. In fact, St. Paul used the postal system of the Roman Empire to spread the gospel. Okay, hindi po nahiya ang ating mga apostol. They did not find advancements in technology as something to be afraid of. They took advantage of it for the benefit of the gospel. He spoke also in the agoras of his time. Okay? Can I can I know if anyone has an idea what an agora mean? Can you type it there in the chat box? Ano po ba ang ibig sabihin ng agora? And why is this very important during the time of St. Paul? Okay. It's the marketplace. Ah, dahil nung panahon po ni San Pablo, there are no televisions, walang Twitter, walang internet. People will spend the time doing social network in the marketplace. There they will debate about ideas. There they will trade using business. There they will do a lot of things. And there the apostles will teach the gospel. There in the middle of the world. Okay? So this is very an important image for us because later on in our time, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI wrote about this as well. He says, I wish to consider the development of digital social networks which are helping to create a new agora, an open public square in which people share ideas, information and opinions, and in which new relationships and forms of community can come into being. It's very short. This 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 statement is very short, but it's very filled with so much meaning. That the new agora now is social media. There exchanges happen. There communities can take place. There dialogue and encounter can have its venue. So what are we supposed to do now if this is what the church is teaching? How will we teach the faith in this techno centric world? So this is the question. And I have three tips, very simple, doable tips for everyone here to ponder on. Can you type number three if you want to know these three things that we would be unboxing this afternoon? Okay, so three things. Ito yung strategy natin. This is like a game plan on how we can use technology for the gospel. And this is the strategy that I want to propose to each and every one of you. Very simple. Madaling maalala. Una, have the right mindset. Okay? Second, learn the right skill set. And hulaan natin yung pangatlo. Puro set yan, na Mindset, skill set. The last is stock up on the right tool set. So let's unbox them one by one. Una, have the right mindset. Let's reflect now, dear friends. When it comes to technology or social media, do we feel or think that, A, The internet is evil. Itago nyo yung television, itago nyo yung computer, wag kayong magagamit ng internet, ha? Evil yan. Okay? Do we think of it that way? There is that tendency. And sometimes, no, we are so worried about what our children, what our students will see online that we tend to, you know, shy away from that. Okay? And we think that it's evil. I know of a place, not in the Philippines, no, where people are very religious, And, you know, they think that the television is evil, that they have to hide it, don't open it, etc., etc. Okay? But, of course, it can be a means to do something evil, to, to watch something evil. But, you know, it's not, it's not what the church is telling us right now. Now, do you also think that gadgets are just merely distractions? Or can these gadgets be used for evangelization? 
Okay, social media is irrelevant to the teaching of the faith. You know, before the pandemic, a lot of parishes did not have a social communications ministry. But because of the pandemic, all of us suddenly realized the internet is here to stay. Online is here to stay. Therefore, a lot of parishes now have live streaming of their activities. Of course, the online world, metaverse, these things will not replace the sacramentality of our faith, like going to the churches personally, receiving our Lord personally. But we cannot also deny that there is already a growing clamor of using social media for the faith. Okay? And anything that's digital is dangerous. Okay? Minsan po ba naisip na natin itong mga ito? If at one point in your life, perhaps not now, kung naisip nyo ito before, can you type number one in the chat box? If you could relate to this at one point before, no? Long time ago. Yeah, thank you po sa mga nag-share. Okay, now, as Catholic educators, we have the supreme duty to know and follow the mind of the church. Napaka-importante po nito. Did you know that in the 1980s, after the confusion of the Second Vatican Council, a lot of people misinterpreted the letter and the spirit of that council that Vatican had to issue an oath of fidelity that all Catholic teachers around the world should read, sign, proclaim, and live out. I don't know if Catholic schools are still using this oath of fidelity to the magisterium and the Pope, but that is very useful. We have to follow and know the mind of the church. And when we say no, and follow the mind of the church, what do we mean by this? The popes, all the popes until Pope Francis. No? Hindi tayo katulad ng iba nating kaibigan who believe that there is no pope anymore. Even though they're Catholics, they are said the vacantes. No, the faith is teaching us that we have a pope and there is someone in the person of Pope Francis who sits at the throne of Peter. All the councils, we cannot accept the Council of Trent and reject Second Vatican Council. I know there, there might be some questions there. Perhaps Mr. Rentoy and I can have a different session on the Second Vatican Council and how to explain this to Catholic teachers in the future. That might be an interesting uh, session. By the way, I want to know, do you, do you want to know more about the Second Vatican Council? If you want to know more about it and we can try to craft a seminar about it, can you just comment V2, Vatican II? And we will see if we can schedule that in the future. Okay? So, and the magisterium for all times. Okay? So we have to know these things. Ano ba ang tinuturo na simbahan? Because Jesus said to the disciples, to the apostles, whoever hears you, hears me. So kailangan natin pakinggan yung sinasabi ng simbahan, kahit sa technology. So ano ba sinasabi ulit? Nakita na natin kanina, no? Again, let's go to Intermerifica. This is what Intermerifica of the Second Vatican Council said. If properly utilized, again ha, conditional po ito. If, properly utilize the press, TV, radio, movies, and other media, which now include social media and the internet. Because when, the ta when this was written, wala pang Facebook. This is 1963. Okay? Can be of great service to mankind since they greatly contribute to men's entertainment. So you see, the church, hindi boring ang simbahan. The church wants us to be entertained. The church wants us to watch movies and enjoy them. Okay? So, to men's entertainment and instruction as well as to the spread and support of the kingdom of God. Summary, use technology to proclaim the gospel. Okay? St. John Paul II in a new forum for proclaiming the gospel in 2002, two years before Facebook started, we must enter into this modern and ever more replete communications network with realism. Okay, ano yung sabihin ng realism? Huwag tayo nagde-deny. No, wala yan. Mawawala rin yung social media. Mawawala rin yung internet. No, no, no. It is here to stay. Makakapatay na tayo lahat dito sa kwarto na ito. Social media is still here and in a greater, different form. Okay? And confidence, convinced that if it is used with competence and conscientious responsibility, it can offer useful for opportunities for spreading the gospel message. So this is what the Saint John Paul II is teaching us. In rapid development, the same Pope who is now a saint wrote. Now, addressed to, surprisingly, our nuns, to our religious brothers and sisters. Sabi dito, consecrated persons, 
belonging to institutions having the charism of the of using the mass media have a particular responsibility in this regard. Okay, of course, not everyone is forced by the Pope to use social media. For example, you are a contemplative nun and it's not part of your charism to, to be, you know, using social media. But if you are like the St. Paul priest, no, their charism is really communication. They have a particular responsibility for this. So each to its own charism, depending on the institution that one belongs to. Okay, so of course, the church also values freedom a lot. There's no forcing. Of course, the church is telling us, social media is here. My children, it's up to you how you will be doing and you know using it. Let's continue what St. John Paul II said. Spiritually and professionally, formed towards this end, these institutions should willingly lend their help wherever pastorally appropriate in order to offset the inappropriate use of media and to promote higher quality programs, the contents of which will be respectful of the moral law and rich in human and Christian values. In other words, the Pope is recognizing there is so much evil in the internet, in TV, in social media. We have to drown evil with an abundance of good. How? By doing what we have to do on the platform that technology offers us. This is beautiful. Do you agree that, you know, this is beautiful? Have you, if again, if this is new to you, if you haven't read quotations of the church on the use of technology before, just comment letter N in the chat box. And wow, this is a good learning for all of us, right? So that's the mindset, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot hate technology because our popes, our magisterium, our church embraces technology. So that's the mindset. The second skill set. Okay, birds, now we're convinced. We have to do technology. We have to leave technology. We have to go digital. Now what? What can we do? How do we do that? We need skill set. So what are the skill set? Okay, what skills do we need to learn? Learning how to learn. Important. A lot of people, okay, I have some friends who didn't want to learn. Ilang years na po tayo na sa pandemic? Tatlong taon na. Okay, I have a lot of old pe old friends, even my mom, who is also <laughs> a senior citizen. She learned how to use Zoom. She knows how to start a Zoom meeting. She knows how to, to, to pin herself, to chat, to, to make sure that what she puts on Zoom will be recorded. Stuff like She knew those things. She learned it because she wanted to learn. But there is another friend of mine who is much younger. Okay, He is a... He is an educator and he should be adept in technology. Okay? But every time, no? He, <laughs> kinikwento sa akin ng kaibigan ko, this is from another university, no? Hindi daw marunong mag-open ng Zoom. Bakit kaya? Kasi two years na tayong nasa pandemic, of course, okay sana kung two weeks pa lang, no? May adjustment. But if again, if two weeks na, two years na po tayong nasa pandemic, we still don't know how to use Zoom, we have to check our willingness to learn, okay? Of course, no offense to those who are really having a hard time. Eh, ganon din po talaga. Okay, let me tell you. My mom, I, I, she really had a hard time distinguishing what newsfeed and timeline means in Facebook. So until now, whenever she would have a friend, she would say, oh, may nag-share sa timeline ko ng, ano, ng news. Pero that's really from her newsfeed. So may mga ganong confusion. So again, it's, it's the attitude thing. Are we open to learn? And how do we learn how to learn? So it's important with the advancement of technologies that we learn how to learn. We humble ourselves in learning new technologies. To be honest with you, even I am a millennial, I don't know how to use TikTok. I don't know. My volunteers in Unboxing Catholicism, they have been pushing me. Feeling ko nga, mas marunong pa si Mr. Rentoy sa akin mag-TikTok. But I want to learn it. And I will learn it once I, I, I get the time. So again, the attitude of learning is one of the skills that we need to learn. Second, Oh, this is very important. no? As we have seen in the previous months, a lot of people, sadly, even teachers would say, do your research on TikTok and on YouTube. We need critical thinking and discernment. Okay, I don't know, perhaps there could be another session on how to spot fake news, on how to use discernment in technology. We don't have the time for that now. So if you want to learn more about critical thinking and discernment in technology, that could be a future session we could offer to you. Can you type CTD, Critical Thinking Discernment, if you want to request that session in the future? 
Again, we cannot promise, but we will try to see if it is possible. Okay, there are people who are interested in the topic. Okay, next. Reading, ito, very important, lalo na sa ating mga teachers na Catholics, no? parents and parishioners, parish priests, seminarians, deacons, nuns, reading the catechism and other magisterial documents of the church. Nakakalungkot po, minsan tayo pa mismo mga Katoliko ang hindi pamilyar sa itinuturo ng ating simbahan. So we really have to do something about this. And I encourage everyone, kung may free time po tayo, no? the catechism is available online, it's free. The magisterial documents are there in the website of the Vatican. It's just a matter of us really trying to be interested in what the church has to say in many things about our lives. Okay? So, 21st century skills that we need to learn. A lot of you guys have this already. But mahalaga yung competencies dito. Problem solving, creativity, financial literacy. Okay? That's why I also am a financial advocate. As a financial consultant, I also give financial literacy talks to teachers and families. Okay, so it's important. No, it's part of the 21st century skills. ICT literacy, cultural and civic literacy. Do our students still know how to read novels? No, sino po dito ang mahilig pang magbasa ng classics, novels? Okay, sino dito yung kahit gusto niya matuto magbasa ng novels and classics, and he wants or she wants to use it for the classroom? And she, he or she doesn't know how to use it. And you, if you want to learn, no, Doctor Mr. Rentoy has a master's degree in literature. I think doctoral nga ata. No, he could also give us a session on using stories in evangelization, like novels, like the classics. He used to teach Latin, and he has a lot of stories to share about this particular skill. No, so if you're interested in that, type L I T or Lit. Ayan, no? yes, not just reading but using it in class. Very good. So, Mr. Rentoy, we have another topic to, to unbox in our future series. No, really to, to have this, to help students to read. Ay, ang hirap na pong gawin yan ngayon. No? Paano natin tutulungan ang mga kabataang magbasa? Kasi nga, hindi lahat nagbabasa ng libro. Yung iba, nakikinig ng audiobook. No? So, in any case, how do we use critical thinking? How do we inspire students to, to read the news properly? All of these skills are very important in the 21st century. Okay, here, ito, very important po. Please take a screenshot. And then later on, when you have that time, you reflect, alin kaya dito yung marunong ako? Alin yung hindi ko alam? And what do I do to, to learn more about this? For example, do you know how to use SoundCloud.com to upload lectures, recordings, do you know how to edit videos? Do you know how to use Canva? Did you even know that as an educator, you can use Canva for free if you sign up with your .edu account? No? Do you know how to use blogging? Okay. Have you ever tried podcasting? And in our July series, I really hope you guys can join us there. I will teach you about podcasting and how easy it is to get started. You know, I will even make a promise to you that if you take it seriously, in just one night, you can have a published podcast on Spotify. Imagine mo, sister, no? You can have a podcast on contemplative life, inviting women who are still discerning their vocation to see the joy of how you live your vocation. And you are on Spotify because your sisters, your congregation has a podcast. How beautiful is that? If you are a teacher, you can... To have a podcast to inspire students to create their own Catholic content. And you know, before we know it, we are already sharing a lot of good things in the digital agora, in the digital space, and you are already falling in love with evangelization by doing these things. No? So if you are a parish priest, okay, how do you do podcasts? I will also share that with you in the July seminar series. Okay, Do we know how to use Google Docs? Okay, so very important po yung mga yan. Okay, yan. July 26 yan, how teachers can use podcasting in spreading the faith. Yes. Si Bon, Bo, si bon willing to learn this. It's important. No? Everyone has a story to share. You know what's beautiful about podcasting? There is no fee to get started. You can start for free. That's how Unboxing Catholicism started and I can't wait to really help you get started on your own podcast. Okay, other tips. Be familiar. With the games, series, and the songs that our students are interested in. Why? So that we can relate to them. 
okay, this is also actually my problem also. I'm not really into games. So I would, what I do, sometimes I eat lunch with one of my students and then I ask, uy, ano ba mga nilalaro ninyo ngayon? No? So that I could use it in my exam. Remember the exam I gave you, no? may mga words doon. Yung, yung sample exam ko sa religion class, I use words, I use preferences to pop culture, the songs that they listen to. I remember when I was teaching grade 7, I knew that that class was into OPM. You know OPM? Original Filipino Music. So what I would do, I would put lyrics of the songs at the end of the test just to make it a little bit more interesting. And you know, my students will submit to me the, 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 the test after they take it they would continue the lyrics because they know the song. That's one of the songs that they love. And then, of course, while taking the exam or after, while, while, while they're about to finish the exam, I will play the music. Oh, everyone, you know, they are singing to the love song. It's the experience. Again, as I've mentioned, we Catholic educators, we have to be experienced designers. Okay? Even in the parishes, the parish priest has to be the best experience designer for the parishioners. If there are, if you are a nun and then you want to invite more people to experience the life of a consecrated life, what is that experience that we can offer people outside so that they see what is happening inside? Now, so later I'll show you a sample of how a Franciscan priest is really helping us learn more about his life as a friar. Hindi pala priest, no? Friar yata ang tawag doon. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I might be uh, mixing up the terms. I'm not too familiar with these things. So, but yeah, you can use the chat box. Okay? So, give performance tasks to our students that will utilize new media. Podcasting, blogging, vlogging, etc. You know, you don't even have to be a teacher to do this. I know a father, every month, they have this presentation event in the family. He would just give his children you know, a training in doing presentations and he will give prizes. Take note, this is a family and then they would talk about things that they love doing. For example, one kid in the family loves eating chocolates and then the father will ask them, oh, create a presentation about chocolates and then present it to the family and then we will react. So, you know, you don't have to be a teacher to do technology and help the kids learn it. It's something that can start there and then eventually, the students will see, wow, I can use this skill for evangelization. Okay? Use digital Catholic resources. Jan po tayo maraming marami. Now, we don't have a shortage of resources. We have a shortage of people who take advantage of the resources. So what is this? Ito na. This is the third tip. This will be now the right tool set. Okay, in the right tool set, I will give you now the practical tips or practical stuff that you can use in the classroom, in the parish, in the seminary, in the convent. So, ano yung mga Catholic tools that we can use? Okay, books or e-books. Okay, if you are into reading, this is fantastic. Blogs, podcast, okay, vlogs with video, online courses, which I also do with Mr. Rentoy. Mobile apps. I forgot to tell you, kung meron kayong estudyante or ikaw, ikaw mismo, hirap ka magbasa ng libro, you don't finish a book. Have you tried audiobooks? Who here has tried audiobooks already? To tell you, uh, when the pandemic has started, I still love reading books, but I struggle finishing books because of a lot of things that I do. But I thrive in listening to audiobooks because I can listen to audiobooks while I'm doing the dishes, even while I'm in the shower, while walking, while jogging, while even in the gym. So it's very flexible. I get to listen to the books that I want. And you know, you might say, Burns, hindi kasi ako sanay na nakikinig eh. But I think, no, based on my experience, that is something you can learn about. How to learn through audio books. You have to, yeah, depends on the learning style. Tama yan, Catalina, no? Just try it and you might discover. For me, I discovered that I am an auditory learner. I really remember things when I hear them. So I really remember, in fact, there is a weird phenomenon that happened in my, not a phenomenon, a weird thing that keeps on happening. For example, in, when I, in 2017, <clears throat> I used to listen to this podcast called Startup because I really, I'm into starting company, wanting to learn business, etc., etc. So I have this, I listen to this podcast called Startup every day while commuting to school. Because I would listen to the shuttle, the jeepney, the train. And you know, I listen to the same podcast, okay, 
one of the episodes, I listened to one of the episodes in 2020 and it was so weird that I think I'm really an auditory learner. When I listened to one particular episode, everything flashed back to me. Like what happened during the first time I listened to that episode? I remember being in the FX. I was, you know, making, uh, making the payment. I, I remember what I was wearing. It was so weird. And it keeps on happening. Whenever I listen to something that is auditory, I tend to remember what, was ha what is happening around me. So perhaps that's an indication that I am an auditory learner. Some learners, they learn by doing, kinesthetic. Some would learn by looking, visual. So again, depends on your learning style. So thank you for that reminder, Catalina. Okay, mobile apps. Who here has mobile apps in their phones? Can you comment? The mobile apps that you use for the faith. Catholic mobile apps. Can you comment there, ladies and gentlemen? Meron po ba kayong ginagamit na Catholic mobile apps? Okay? Ayan, halo. Apart sa halo, meron pa po ba iba? Ayan, laudate. I'm so happy that you're using halo. Okay, Bible app, laudate. Okay, online rosary. Very good. Laudate. Okay? CCC, thank you, Sister Maribel. So there are a lot of mobile apps that we can use. No, Here are some of the recommendations. Ah, hindi ko po alam yung OneTouch Plus. Baka pwede nyo pong i-share ko anong meron dyan. Okay, Ka recommended blogs muna tayo. Okay, blogs. Catholic.com. Okay, sinabi ko na to before. Aletea.org. That's also a very beautiful source of information. Opusday.org. Catholicscomehome.org where you can see a lot of conversion stories. Okay, also... Bishop Barron's wordonfire.com at siyempre lalayo pa ba kayo unboxingcatholicism.com Ayan, the Saint Jose Maria app, very good. Okay, next. Okay, I, I mentioned this when we talked about deepening Eucharistic piety, carloacutis.com Okay, now recommended books, just take a screenshot of this on how on what you can use for your class, Evangelizing Catholics by Dr. Scott Han. This is very beautiful, one of my favorite books on really learning about evangelization. Okay, Rome Sweet Home by Dr. Scott Han. Surprised by Truth by Patrick Madrid. Again, if you took a screenshot of my conversion story slide with the books that I've read, then these are the same books of Brother Bo Sanchez, who's our good friend. And of course, my book, once I finish writing it, medyo mahahaba pa po ang aking lalakbayin dahil mahirap pa lang magsulat ng libro. No? But we are doing this, so please include that in your prayers. Now, recommended podcasts. Yan. Sige nga po, do you listen to any Catholic podcast? I wanna know, what Catholic podcast do you listen to? Okay, meron po bang nakikinig sa inyo sa mga podcast? Bible in a Year, fantastic! That's one of the best. And by the way, it's also on Halo. Okay, you can access that for free on the Halo app. So, recommended podcast, Catholic Answers Live and Catholic Answers Focus. Okay, Road to Emmaus podcast, 10 Minutes with Jesus. Saint Jose Maria podcast, the J. Aruga podcast. Again, if you want to know more about moral issues, no, this is a re parang bagong podcast ito sa Philippines. Si J. Aruga, who's my guest co-host in Unboxing Catholicism, he discusses moral issues like abortion, contraception, and how to explain it to people using the moral theology of the church. So very interesting. He is the first conservative podcast in the Philippines. So the J. Aruga podcast, the Bible in Year podcast, I forgot to put it here. And of course, our podcast, Unboxing Catholicism. It's always there for you guys. Now, recommended YouTube channels or vlogs. Okay, meron po ba kayong mga recommendation of vlogs? Please share para makita ng iba at makakapag-subscribe din tayo. No? Unang gusto ko i-recommend, of course, Catholic Answers. Okay, meron pang comment dito, Divine Mercy Shrine. Okay, thank you, Army. We also have Catholics Come Home. The Coming Home Network, Breaking in the Habit. This is one of my favorites. Father Casey Cole, I think he's a Franciscan friar, and he does a lot of good content. Breaking in the Habit. Okay? Ayan. Coming Home Net. Thank you, Steph. All right. Ascension Presents, where Father Mike Schmitz is, and they're the ones producing the Bible in your podcast. Opus Dei English. Of course, there are other languages, pero maintindihan ninyo Opus Dei. What is beautiful about Opus Dei English, ladies and gentlemen, is they have stories of people striving for holiness in the context of marriage. People who are doing different profession. Mayroong bumbero, fireman, guard, 
And how are they looking for God in the work that they do? So those are very beautiful stories that you can use in your classes, even in your family get-togethers, or even in your parishes. Okay, so Opus Dei English, please check that out. Of course, Unboxing Catholicism, I will not be tired of promoting our own, of course. Of course, Bishop Baron, Word on Fire, very, very fantastic channel also. Okay, now, recommended apps. Okay, Halo is my number one. That's my favorite Catholic app. In fact, I would say, I would dare say that it's the most beautifully laid out technological advancement in the Catholic space. Okay, so if you are not yet using Halo, you can use it for free, totally for free forever. But there is also a trial period that I can give you for three months to use the paid features. Laudate is there, Catholic Answers Live. I super love doing before the reimagining the exam before I realize that it's also on Halo. So I do the exam on Halo and the spiritual exercises. Relevant Radio, Divine Office, if you are into the Liturgy of the Hours, and I really found so much joy in doing the Liturgy of the Hours as a lay person. In fact, we are highly encouraged by the church. Even Bishop Baron started a new business. No, They will have these subscription boxes or subscription book in the U.S. where you could pay a little amount of money and then they will send, send you booklets of the Liturgy of the Hours. But the Divine Office app is free. Okay, Form.org is also a very beautiful app. It, if you want to have a Netflix of Catholic formation in English, you can use form.org. And very soon, okay, I want to hear, I want to know your thoughts on this since you are also part of the Facebook group. Halo is the number one app on my list. Okay, and I will make a very important announcement about this. Very soon, we will be launching Halo content in Tagalog. Okay, our target date for the launch will be on September 28th, the Feast of St. Lorenzo Ruiz, the first Filipino saint. So if you have ideas on what sort of Filipino prayers you think should be in Halo, okay, please comment there in the chat box. I will save the chat and review it later. Or please send me an email or message me because I would love to share it with our team in Halo. Okay, I'm helping out in setting this up here in the Philippines. And... Yes, there is a huge possibility that I will be the first Filipino voice in Halo. So, welcome to Halo. I don't know how that will happen, no? Maligayang pagdating sa Halo. <laughs> but please, okay, examination of conscience in Tagalog for kids. Thank you. Keep the comments coming. I would love to know what you guys would want to have in Tagalog for Halo. So, I'm doing, uh, I'm working with Halo now to develop this for our Catholic Filipino Catholics. Okay, so speaking of Halo, if you are not yet signed up and there's no reason for you not to grab this opportunity to try this for free for three months, Halo.com Unboxing Catholicism. Go there and claim your three-month free trial and 20% discount from your subscription. If you have any suggestions about Halo, whether it's the price, it's the language, it's the layout, it's you know the content in Tagalog, let me know. I will be sure to give it to the people there in the U.S. who are working on the app itself. Okay, so this is what Formed looks like. It has a lot of content in English, formation content, catechism, uh, preparation for confirmation, etc., etc. So there is also a subscription for this. But if you have a parish which has a subscription, you can ride on it as well. Okay, so... Yes, very interesting, no? Uh, Emily is saying Tagalog mass songs. Now, if you will go to Halo, you will see that there is a part called music. So I'm already talking to Feast Music to put their music there, the charismatic music. And let's pray that I could get rights also from the Himige Suita because they have very, very good uh, songs as well. And then, uh, yes, Sister Maribel, for now, we will start with Filipino, with Tagalog. Okay. And then eventually we will see. If we could do Cebuano, Kapampangan, etc. All right. And of course, Unboxing Catholicism is a website you could visit. I'm still building this where you would see the replace of all the sessions that Man and I will be giving plus more resources in the Unboxing Catholicism University. The first of its kind in the country, a platform where you will learn apologetics and catechism and evangelization. Maglalagin lang po kayo dyan. Every month, may donation. 
and then you can access all the formation materials that we will be doing and then with more um uh, with more content exclusively for the students of unboxing you okay again we will send you an email once these things are up okay but well, after all of these things have been said and done we have to remember what saint jose maria escriva says okay our very existence as christians must be interwoven with prayer for the contemplative soul is filled with apostolic zeal therefore without prayer our witnessing will be weak. So we might be using technology to our advantage. We must, we might be maximizing all of these new digital means, but without prayer, everything will be in vain. So prayer, prayer, prayer. Grace, grace, grace. Conversion, conversion, conversion. That's what we use technology for. If we can use technology to help people to pray more, if we can use technology to help people, people meditate more and learn more about the faith, yes, let's do it. But please let us not remember our own prayer life. For we have to be contemplatives. We may not be nuns who are really, you know, living that vocation in the convent or seminarians. But hey, St. Jose Maria Escriva is reminding us, all of us could be contemplatives in the middle of the world. Okay? So while we utilize digital technologies, we should balance it with prayer, sacrifice, personal encounter, meaning face-to-face -face meetups, and dialogue with our children, students, and parishioners. We should be both high-tech and high-touch. Ayan, okay? So again, these are the resources you can take advantage of. Marami po yan. And yes, if you haven't downloaded this yet, Learn how to defend the faith clearly without being preachy. Defend the faith without losing your friends. www.unboxingcatholicism.com forward slash starter guide. There you will see how we use technology in evangelization. And please feel free to use whatever resources we produce for whatever reason you might find it fitting. Okay, so that's it. That's what I wanted to share. Sorry, I took a lot of time. And if you have questions or suggestions, we may talk about it in our open forum. Ayan, sabi ni Sister, contemplative in action. Yes, that's our vocation as lay people. No? Kahit nasa trabaho tayo, we are doing contemplation. Okay, Handbook of Prayers by Father Sosha's app. Ayan, okay yan. Praying for all intentions for growth. Okay. Okay, now another thing that we have to unbox in halo i forgot to tell you there is a part there called prayer groups i don't know kung na notice nyo po yun no sa homepage ng halo ninyo may mga prayer groups jaan so i hope you can check that out and join the prayer group of unboxing catholicism so i'll send you guys the prayer group for those who are using the halo app okay give me a moment for the meantime while i'm uh generating the link for the halo app group you could send in your suggestions and your questions. Okay, how do I share with you the group? Okay, I don't know how to do that now. So see, even <laughs> I have to learn that. But have you seen that, no, ladies and gentlemen? May halo group kayong makikita dyan. Okay, so may question dito. Among the skills and tools you mentioned, what would you recommend for teachers to learn first? Mm, Army, depende kung ano yung ituturo ninyo. Okay, skills. Are we referring to podcasting? Okay, you have to also know if you are a natural speaker, kung madaldal ka ba, or if you want to, to transmit the faith to your students by that means. Kasi meron pa akong other tech skill na nakalimutang banggitin sa inyo. No? Do you use Padlet? No? Should have updated the slide to include that. Padlet is one of the engagement tools that you can use for your class. So, anong kailangan mong matutunang una? Hmm. I would answer army depending on what your students and what you need. Okay, if you're teaching religion, anong topic ba? Kasi different technologies can be used for different things. Okay, if you're using technology, ano ba yung ipapagawa mo sa mga estudyante mo? Okay? Saan ka ba mas komportable? Are you a, tech, a techie person, army? No? So, I cannot recommend something na uunahin ng lahat kasi I think it will be a case-to-case -case basis. I don't know, Mr. Rentoy, 
do you have a suggestion on that? Or perhaps other teachers or other attendees may have a suggestion on what should we learn first? Kasi for me, you learn what you need. <laughs> Ganun lang po yun. No? Natuto akong gumawa ng website dahil I needed to launch my blog before. I learned how to do podcasting because a friend pushed me to do podcasting and it worked for me. I learned how to do email marketing because my advocacy demanded that I learn it. So, kung ano siguro yung madali, army. No, sorry, I was not able to give a particular answer kasi it really depends on your particular situation. Case-to-case -case basis. Thank you, army. Okay? So, if you can give examples of what subjects or or what topics do you want to integrate technology for then baka perhaps we can give suggestions on activities or even instructional materials where you can use technology for example ha you want to teach prayer okay then use hello the way we did it last time diba nagpray tayo very short if you want to use the lexio divina maraming resources to on okay if you want to teach your students about hmm, Conversion stories of people. Either they can do an interview. Interview nila yung mga kakilala nilang dating hindi Catholic na naging Catholic. Paraming ganyan na. Not only the prominent converts in the US, there are also uh, converts na as a family lang na hindi vocal. Okay, so, yeah. That interview, okay, you could explore podcasting. O, audio lang. Kasi alam mo ang maganda army and everyone sa podcasting. Sa una, hindi kita mukha mo. Kung nahihiya ka, if you're camera shy, Boses lang ang puhunan. Laway lang ang puhunan. May podcast ka na. Ayan. Tama po si Ma'am ano, Rodriguez. Skills in order to solve problems or according to the need. Yeah. What I did now, I lay down to you all the things you can use. Now, it discern natin ano magagamit. And then kung meron kayong tanong kung anong particular technology or particular solution na magagamit ninyo, then you can consult me and Mr. Rentoy. And if you need to learn more how to use Google, I don't know, no? Kung nag Meron po bang nag-Google training dito sa inyo? Kasi we can also give you that sessions in the future, no? Certification trainings for Google. Ayan. So, meron na po bang nag-undergo ng Google certification for education or wala pa dito? Okay. So, parang wala pa, no? So, if you want to maximize Google Suite, that is another skill that you can learn. And there are online trainings for that. Okay, important skill. Understand the digital generation, their mindset, their outlook, their attitude, so that we can connect with them. Okay. Ayan. Okay. Training through the school. Yan, sister. Tama po. Maraming schools na nag-train ng Google. Okay. But if you want to have refresher, pwede po sa YouTube or depende sa topic na gusto ninyo, we can also do something like that in the future. Kami naman ni Mr. Rentoy, we craft all the types of trainings as long as they can help the teachers. Okay, so thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. May certification online, Army. No, You can pay Google uh, a certain amount of money. I forgot how much I paid. And then you can get level 1 and level 2 free yung training nila online. Okay, but if you want a Filipino to give the training, may mga trainers din na pwede mag-train for you, okay, for your school, we can also be the one to train you on the basic skills, okay, and then you take the exam on your own. Okay, so I think we're done. <laughs> so, ideas for you to think about, and yes, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow, our topic, Mr. Rentoy, will be how to be pro-life, right? Okay. So thank you so how much. Raise, how to raise pro-life uh, generation of young right. people who will stand up for life. Yes, okay. yes. Sir, I'll may, stop recording first. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Tomorrow yan. Abangan po ninyo. Very important.